with profound, humble gratitude and love to all venerated enlightened masters. We bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy, blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by their divine grace. Part 3 of 4 Etc. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. To learn the inner secrets of the scriptures, we must make them our true daily breath. Find God in them when we are in greatest need. Please continue watching for insights on the spiritual life by the Reverend Thomas Merton, vegetarian. We must fight against the spirit of unconscious cruelty with which we treat the animals. Animals suffer as much as we do. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, MD, vegetarian. Glaciers, geysers and hot springs are just some of the natural wonders of enchanting Iceland. Come visit and greet the friendly locals with hi hi, which means hello in Icelandic. I am Stefan. The earth-loving Icelanders appreciate how God provides for all our needs. Did you know that even though Iceland is one of the northernmost inhabited places on the planet, the abundant natural hot geysers can be used to provide heat to homes and buildings. May God's love for all, through the natural gifts and blessings that this provides us, be appreciated by everyone. Welcome to Living in God's Grace, from Thoughts and Solitude, by the Rev. Thomas Merton, Vegetarian, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. The Reverend Thomas Merton, an important Catholic mystic and spiritual thinker, was born in 1915 to an American mother and a New Zealand father. The many life situations he encountered in his youth led him to explore religion and spirituality and eventually to devote his life to God by becoming a monk and later a deacon at the Abbey of Getsemane, a part of the Order of Trappists in Kentucky, USA. He also enjoyed living alone in a hermitage in the monastery's wilderness area. During his monastic life, Thomas Merton developed his writing talent by translating religious texts and writing biographies. He also penned poetry as well as books and articles on topics ranging from spirituality to social justice and peace. One of Merton's most famous statements was, For me to be a saint means to be myself. Therefore, the problem of sanctity and salvation is in fact the problem of finding out who I am and of discovering my true self. He also said, We are living in a world that is absolutely transparent and God is shining through it all the time. This is not just a nice story or a fable, it is true. Believing in the equality of all religions, Thomas Merton became deeply interested in Eastern traditions in the later years of his life. He also held lively discourses with His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. Today, the life and works of the wise reverend are still studied at the Thomas Merton Center in Kentucky, USA and the International Thomas Merton Society. Let us continue with selections from Thomas Merton's book, Thoughts in Solitude, where the wise reverend expounds on God's unconditional love for us. Part 2. The Love of Solitude. Chapter 17. What is it that has made me evil and hateful to myself? It is my own folly, my own darkness, which have divided me by sin against the light which God has placed in my soul, to be the reflection of His goodness and the witness of His mercy. Shall I drive evil out of my soul? 
by wrestling with my own darkness? This is not what God has planned for me. It is sufficient to turn away from my darkness to His light. I do not have to run away from myself. It is sufficient that I find myself, not as I have made myself by my own stupidity, but as He has made me in His wisdom and remade me in His infinite mercy. For it is His will that my body and soul should be the temple of His Holy Spirit, that my life should reflect the radiance of His love and my whole being repose in His peace. Then will I truly know Him, since I am in Him and He is truly in me. Chapter 18 The Psalms are the true garden of the solitary and the scriptures are his paradise. They reveal their secrets to him because, in his extreme poverty and humility, he has nothing else to live by except their fruits. For the true solitary, the reading of scripture ceases to be an exercise among other exercises, a means of cultivating the intellect or the spiritual life or appreciating the liturgy. To those who read scripture in an academic or aesthetic or merely devotional way, the Bible indeed offers pleasant refreshment and profitable thoughts. But to learn the inner secrets of the scriptures, we must make them our true daily bread, find God in them when we are in greatest need, and usually when we can find him nowhere else and have nowhere else to look. In solitude I have at last discovered that you have desired the love of my heart. O oh my God, the love of my heart as it is, the love of a human's heart. I have found and have known, by your great mercy, that the love of a human's heart that is abandoned and broken and poor is most pleasing to you and attracts the gaze of your pity, and that it is your desire and your consolation. O oh my Lord, to be very close to those who love you and call upon you as their Father, that you have perhaps no greater consolation, if I may so speak, than to console your afflicted children and those who came to you poor and empty-handed with nothing but their humanness and their limitations and great trust in your mercy. Only solitude has taught me that I do not have to be a god or an angel to be pleasing to you, that I do not have to become a pure intelligence without feeling and without human imperfection before you will listen to my voice. You do not wait for me to become great before you will be with me and hear me and answer me. It is my lowliness and my humanness that have drawn you to make me your equal by condescending to my level and living in me by your merciful care. And now it is your desire, not that I give you the thanks and recognition you receive from your great angels, but the love and gratitude that comes from the heart of a child, a son of woman, your own son. My father, I know you have called me to live alone with you, and to learn that if I were not a mere human, a mere human being capable of all mistakes and all evil, also capable of a frail and errant human affection for you, I would not be capable of being your son. You desire the love of a human's heart, because your divine Son also loves you with a human's heart, and he became man in order that my heart and his heart should love you in one love, which is a human love born and moved by your Holy Spirit. If therefore I do not love you with a human's love, and with a human's simplicity, and with the humility to be myself, I will never taste the full sweetness of your fatherly mercy, and your Son, as far as my life goes, will have died in vain, it is necessary that I be human and remain human in order that the cross of Christ be not made void. Jesus died not for the angels but for humans. This is what I learn from the Psalms and solitude, for the Psalms are full of the human simplicity of men like David, who knew God as men and loved him as men, and therefore knew him, the one true God, who would send his only begotten Son to humans in the likeness of man, that they while still remaining human, might love him with a divine love. And this is the mystery of our vocation, not that we cease to be human in order to become angels or gods, but that the love of my human heart can become God's love for God and humans, and my human tears can fall from my eyes 
as the tears of God, because they well up from the motion of His Spirit in the heart of His incarnate Son. Hence the gift of piety grows in solitude, nourished by the Psalms. When this is learned, then our love of other humans becomes pure and strong. We can go out to them without vanity and without complacency, loving them with something of the purity and gentleness and hiddenness of God's love for us. This is the true fruit and true purpose of Christian solitude. For more information about Thomas Merton, vegetarian, please visit merton.org. Go ahead and make war, so that your own citizens will hate you even more than your enemies. Caring viewers, it was a pleasure that you could join us today. Coming up next is Odessa, Pearl of the Black Sea, right after Noteworthy News. May the celestial light and melodies bring you serenity always. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash w-o-w. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique w-o-w. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada w-o-w. Nasce predavanie predlagat mnogo ezici. Mole vište suprememastertv.com naklone na črta schedule i suprememastertv.com naklone na črta w-o-w.